Welcome to Scholastic Teach, where we bring the voices and classroom ideas of real teachers directly to you in 15 minutes or less. I'm your host, Tara Welty. I'm delighted to be here today with Juan Edgar Gonzalez, Jr. Juan is an elementary public school teacher in Dickinson, Texas. You may know him from his wildly popular Instagram account, Teaching Third with Mr. G. Welcome, Juan. Yay, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Juan, tell me a little bit about yourself and your school and your students. Absolutely. So like you said, my name is Juan Edgar Gonzalez Jr. To the kids, I go by Mr. G. I'm currently on my 12th year in education and teaching third grade. Let's dig a little bit into that classroom practice. You talked about the way that you share books, your Instagram, and the way that you share out. You really share out a love of reading and books with the whole world, really. But how do you share a love of books and reading in your own classroom? When I first started teaching, we looked at reading instruction. Reading instruction was a box curriculum, story of the week, questioning. And I'm not here to say that that's not okay, but I think when you first start teaching, it's packaged there. It helps readers understand parts of the story and how to look through the text. And it's helpful. It's helpful to start. But the more I did it, what I realized about reading instruction is that there was no actual instruction of reading life. All it was was strategies and books and never really talking about what reading could do. And then the more that I did this in every area in academics, what I realized is that reading is everything. It's science, it's math, it's social studies. And so for me, like it always starts with me when I talk about reading, I don't talk about it in just the teacher point of view or the academic point of view. It's a sharing with readers what reading is, how it brings joy to my life. And the beautiful thing about kids is that how we act and how we act towards things most of them kind of follow our lead. I want them, when they think about Mr. G, the next thing that I want them to think about is books. And so it's me really being the ultimate salesman to my students about why I love books so much and why they're exciting and why they should be part of your life, as opposed to just, you should read this and respond or answer some questions to it, which a lot of times is what kids think reading is. So how do you find the balance between teaching the curriculum that you must teach and then bringing in that joyful readerly experience into your classroom? Such a great question. And it's a good question because it's a complicated one. And if you're a first year teacher listening to this, I think it's so important to know that building your craft as a teacher takes time. And it's not just something that someone starts doing from the very beginning. And I know what it's like to be a first year teacher. And I remember reading blogs and just listening to other teachers and wanting to get to a point where I felt super confident in the work that I did. But no one ever told me that it took time. I thought I was already supposed to be doing it. And so in the beginning, you kind of take what's given to you and you have to understand the process of what's already in place. And when you have that, you know, I always tell teachers, we're not self-employed. It'd be so great to be able to take all the things that we see and we find and put it into our instruction. But sometimes, or most of the time, we have to stick to what's expected of us. And so you do that and you understand the curriculum and you understand what's expected for your learners. And then that's where that work of being a reader as an adult comes in, because then you can start switching out text, pulling in to enhance the lessons that you're trying to make. And that's where that's where the beauty lies, where you can really be excited about the text because it's new or it makes the conversation that you're trying to have or the strategy that you're trying to teach so much better because the text that you're sharing is more exciting. And so I think it's really just looking at your curriculum. And once you know it well, and then you know books, you start kind of doing the the swap method of just, this one is better. This will take us there better. This will engage them better. And I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you're a third grade teacher and you're right at that age where, you know, not every kid is reading as well as we might hope that they would be at that age. and, And not every kid is loving reading as much as we hope that they might be at that age. And so what are some strategies that you employ to help support the kids who need more development in reading? For me, step one is always being the walking salesman, the billboard for reading, the passion that shows them this is what's possible if you have a reading life. And to me, when we think about a reading life and what's so important is what we don't talk about with students is that if you listen to audiobooks, graphic novels, all of that to me in my eyes is you building your reading life. And so really having those moments where you establish a confidence in them to say you are a reader. And so while you might not be reading the same text as your peers or you feel that struggle, we're going to work on it together. 
And so building that confidence to make them see that they're a reader is step one. And I think so many times when we work with kids, we tell them all the things that they need to work on and we don't talk about what they're already doing great. That's why I talk about this so much because it's not in the culture when we talk about helping readers grow. We talk about, we hear all their deficits. Here are the interventions we need to put in place. Absolutely. But first, do they just know that they're a reader so that they want to grow, so that they want to continue doing the work to build that life? You said such important things there. You talked about a strength-based approach to working with students and also that not all text is a book. You know, right. There's audio, there's graphic novels, there's digital, there's so many different ways to access knowledge and information and stories. Exactly. And that's why like here in third grade, when this is like the moment where they're either going to continue to work a little bit harder to build or they're going to take off, it's like give them something that's going to be the catalyst that's going to make them want more. So whether it's graphic novels, whether it's audio books, we talk a lot about book choice, but this is why it's so important, especially in this age group, because when you find that one like home run book, that's going to catapult them into the next one in their first chapter book and reading their first series. For me, like that's what I live for. That's what makes me so excited about just being, just teaching reading in general. Um, Of course, all those other things are important, but really building them to start building a reading life. I mean, I think that's why I stay in the classroom. (laughs) That's so awesome. Can you talk about a project or two that you've done in your classroom that involved books? I had the privilege of visiting your classroom and witnessing an amazing project, but I'm sure you have lots of great, inspiring projects that our teachers could really take and implement into their classrooms. I'm a huge fan of the series, The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. And so in that story, I mean, there's so much you can pull out of, you know, uh, the future and science. And it's the story of this robot who washes up on an island, becomes a mother, adopts a gosling, and here comes all these adventures. Well, on one of these adventures, they have to get into a cabin because there's this big storm coming and there's a skunk that lives in this abandoned cabin. And in the cabin, they befriend the skunk. And at the end of their friendship, the skunk says to them, to Roz, the robot, us misunderstood creatures need to stick together. And Roz agrees. And that line has always stuck with me from that book. And where I've taken it is I've asked my students to think about the animals that exist in our world and who could be misunderstood. And so right now, taking that line, because I read the, the series with my students this year, they're creating their own podcast. And so in their podcast, they are bringing all the important information about these animals and seeing what are the things that we're missing about these animals instead of just the negative connotations when we think of them. So right now, working on misunderstood creatures from that one line from The Wild Robot Escapes um, is something that I'm super proud of, and I can't wait to see it come into fruition. You've brought in science, you've brought in working with multimedia, all sorts of cross-curricular connections that you're making there. I'm going to ask you what should be an easy question, but I think it's always the hardest one. What are your favorite books? I really despise this question because sometimes I feel like when I answer, I think of like the books sitting on the shelf and they hear me and then they're not going to be nice to me. I was like, that's the cut. Like, that's how connected I am to everything that I read. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have lots of favorite books. And I think because I'm in a position where I get to share books with readers every day, my list can go on forever. But I love the stories that live on with the people that I share it with forever. And so, like I say earlier, I talked about The Wild Robot. That is the one series that I have shared with readers that when they come, when I have their siblings again, or when I see them out in the grocery store in the community, they talk about that book. They ask me, are you reading The Wild Robot? Are you talking about Roz with your kids now? And so books that make that type of lasting effect, they're everywhere. I love what you said. The books will be sad if I don't mention them. I I feel that deeply in my soul. Um, (laughs) So thank you so much, Juan, for for talking with me today. This was just a pleasure and a joy. I want to make sure that our listeners can find you and learn more about you and learn more about the books you share. So how can they get to you? Yeah, so I know there's a lot of social media out there, but I stick to one because it makes it easy. So on Instagram, you can get little aspects of life and teaching life at Teaching Third with Mr. G. And any new ventures or any new ideas, that's where they'll live. So check me out on Instagram. I will certainly be checking you out on Instagram. It was such a pleasure having you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. My thanks again to Juan for joining me today. And thank you for listening. Keep in touch with us on social media by following Scholastic Teach on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
We look forward to bringing you more real teacher voices and classroom ideas in our next episode of Scholastic Teach. 